Right, so today we are just going to look at the graphs of polynomials of the nth degree. All right, it's not going to be a long lesson. What you need to be able to recognize, all right, say you can see this graph here. All right, this is polynomial to the nth degree. You should uh, look at just a sort of the orange here. That bit is the theoretical value. And you can see that you've got maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, and then up again. All right, so what we need to do today is, for example, here you've got a maximum here, you've got a maximum here. All right, the turning point. So what you're actually looking at, this is the local minimum, this is the local minimum. In terms of global, because this might go up and up and up, it might be bigger than that number, so you may have a global maximum. This is just what you call local. All right, I'll explain a little bit must be able to recognize and describe the nature, the shape, the behavior of a polynomial function of odd and even degree. Now, things like intercept, the concavity, turning points, points of inflection, which is oblique and horizontal. I'll explain that a little bit more later. And things like as x approach positive infinity, what does y approach? As x approach negative infinity, what happened to y? And that sort of stuff. All right, you need to describe the intervals of polynomials and we'll quickly show you how to sketch a graph of the polynomial, right? So now then you, um, that should be after that. Then you need to be able to identify what I call global and local maximum or minimum. All right, go back to this graph here. When we one of the, uh, the behavior, how it, the graph behaves. Come to the next slide. So here, let's have a look at your, if you have the, ch oh no. Nah. When you plot your class bed, if you use your class bed, I use your class, I use my class bed to plot all this. Plot fx equals to x. fx equals to x squared, x squared equals to x cubed. Actually, why don't you plot all of that very quickly on your class bed, please? Do that on your class bed. Let's have a look at this. I've got fx equals to x to the power of 1. fx, x squared, fx, x cubed, x to the power of 4 x to the power of 99 and x to the power of 100. Now, technically speaking, if you've got x to the power of 100, what is the maximum number of x intercepts can you get? 100, that's right. But if you plot it, you can see that it's sort of like a U shape. Now, I've also highlighted things like odd and even. What can you observe? What do you observe in the graph with odd and even? What is the big difference between odd and even? Yep. What else? Matthew? Oh, yeah. so, like, the even all right. Good. So you can see that for the odd one. All right. What you can say is as, oops, what I'm going to do is get a pen. As x approaches, positive infinity, y approaches, positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. All right, that's for the odd one. For the even, you can see that as x, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. X approaches negative infinity, Y approaches positive infinity. All right, so in this case, it's always true for an odd X goes towards infinity, Y goes towards minus infinity. Think about it, if I plot Y equals to X minus X, if I plot Y equals to minus X, it still holds, correct? So it's that case is Y equals to minus X or FX equals to minus X, as x goes to in minus infinity, y goes to minus infinity, positive, positive. All right, here the change is if I plot minus x squared, flip it over. As x goes towards positive in infinity, y goes towards negative infinity. x go towards negative infinity, y go towards negative infinity. This is how you describe it. This is how we should describe Right, so I'm not going to worry about the rest. Here, for an odd degree of polynomial, 
It's just basically, you've got odd positive integer number. And even degree of polynomial is even, uh, uh, even positive integer number, that's all. That's the only difference. What we're going to look at is look at the graphs and interpret things like x and y intercept, the nature, the local extrema, the global extrema, point of inflections, whether it's oblique or horizontal, and concavity between points. Generally, when you're asked to describe this, you're given, given points to describe, all right? So in this case, for x and y intercept, I can label this as x intercept, x intercept, x intercept, point A, point B, and point C. Y intercept, point D, all right? Labeling all this. And then the nature, positive, negative, increasing or decreasing. The nature of it is just like as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, and y approaches negative infinity. So this one is the nature of it. And then you can describe this is increasing. All right, this is also increasing. Whereas this bit here is actually decreasing. All right, so before I talk about increasing, decreasing, let's look at the local minima and local maxima first. So the local minima is this point here. Let's call this, uh, Sir, yep. My class had, uh, Probably the battery. Yeah. Okay, you gotta get it. <laughs> I don't have spare batteries. Look, did I tell you when I first started teaching, which is three years ago? Here, I have uh, x intercept is A, B, and C, and y intercept is point D. Now, the local minima, let's call it E, is here. All right, that's E, and local maxima is here. Let's call it F. All right. So you have, can identify that. Generally, if you are asked to draw a graph, you can use your class pad to identify the local maxima and local minima. The class pad using GSOF, you should be able to work these two points out. All right? Now, they're increasing. You can say that the graph is increasing from negative infinity onwards up to point F. And then it's actually decreasing from point F to point E. All right, so decreasing from point F to point E. All right, and then from E above, this bit is increasing. So you may, if you are asked to give the range, uh, sorry, the domain where the graph is increasing. You know this point. This point is 2, 4, 6, 6, 10. X above 2, that's increasing. Also, X less than whatever this is you work out from your class pad is increasing. Got it? Everyone happy with that? Now, global maxima. In this case, Global, which means it goes on the positive and negative. So you cannot define the global extrema, the global maximum or minimum in this graph. That is not in this graph. It goes on and on, it goes on and on. All right? Point of inflection. Point of inflection is when it changed from concave up to concave down. So here, this point is concave up, up, and this point is concave down. You can only estimate if you are given this. So estimating this, I would say, let's call it point G. G. So it could be somewhere around here. The estimate is good enough. Yes? Slowly, I will show you. There's more coming. Okay, this is only to the power of three. All right? So here, it will be, it will be coming. So here, of this one, it's actually an oblique. Oblique 
point of inflection, horizontal point of inflection, is something like this. Although it goes from con uh, concave down to concave up, the the point of inflection is sort of is horizontal. It's not sort of. It is horizontal. So that is called the horizontal point of inflection. I'll so show you in the graph a little bit later. So these are the things that you need to know. So the concavity is concave down. You can just describe it between A and uh, A and G because that is when it changed. All right. This is the point of inflection. Is A and G. So concavity is concave up. A uh, concave down. Sorry. Between. A and G, because that is the point of inflection when you're changing from concave down to concave up. So concave up, uh, up between G and C. I mean, it's just because these two points are defined. In fact, it should go all the way up. All right, but because the two points are defined, I use G and C. That's all. All right, here, what about here? You can indicate the x and y intercept. So x and y intercepts are just basically this point here. X is here, 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 but y intercept is here as well. So I'm going to use x intercept A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Now with the y intercept, I don't have to have a new uh, labeling system, just call it B. That will do. So again, the nature of it is as x approach negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. x approach positive to infinity, y approach positive infinity. Increasing between a and between a and the local maxima is increasing. Decreasing between the maxima and minima, that is decreasing. And then from this point onwards, it's increasing again. Local extrema, minima and maxima. So let's call this point D and E. This is D, this is E. All right? So it's basically describing between points, and sometimes you do need to know where the points are, reading from graph or using your class pad. There's no global maxima or minima. Ah, the global maxima is positive, negative. You can't really define it here. Strictly speaking, there should be arrow. All right, and then point of inflection. Here, point of inflection, horizontal, horizontal is point B because this is what happened there. It's changing from concave up to concave down. And then the other point of inflection is from concave up to concave down. So it's somewhere around here. I will call that oblique point of inflection, uh, inflection F, somewhere around here, F, and from here to here, concave down to concave up, somewhere around here, G. All right? So you've got, in this case, you've got two oblique points of inflections and one horizontal point of inflection. Yes? Are all symmetrical? No. Not always symmetrical. No. Concavity, again, between points. Concave up between A. A uh, concave down between A and F, between F and G. And then concave up between F and B, and G and C. That's all. Describing the points, using the points. Now, this one is not... It's not... Uh, it's not whatever you call it. It's not um, symmetrical. Can you all try it, please? Sketch it on the graph and try all this, naming all this. All right, local maxima, AB. So where is the maximum? Here and here, correct? So the local maxima, oops, point A and point B. Local minima, C and D. C and D. All right? The point of inflection, E, F, and G. So you actually have got three points of inflection. One, here, you've gone from concave up to concave down. 
somewhere here, concave down to concave up. And then somewhere around here, concave down to concave up. So, E, F, and G, estimate E, F, and G. All right? Sir. It is not always halfway. Yes? Where? No, because this is all, if you look at it, this is all concave down. All right? You can see that this is all, up to this point, is concave up. So there's no point of inflection. There's a turning point here. Not point of inflection. Just make the, thank you for asking, just make sure that you know the difference between turning point and point of inflection. All right? So it just changes from here, this bit. This bit, if you, if you stop the graph here, you draw it, it sort of goes all the way down. All right? Like a a like an N shape. All right, this is the bit. If you draw it, it's all the way up. So it changes from there to there, here, here to here, and here to here. So it's actually, yes? Just let me finish first. Not long to go. All right? Now, the roots H, I, and J, so that is pretty... Uh, straightforward, H, I, and J. Three points. The Y-intercept K. The Y-intercept K is actually the same as this point here. So this is K as well. And then between which point is the graph concave up? Concave up is between E and F. E and F, yep. And... G and J. All right? G and J. All right? Concave down between H and E. And concave down is here between F and G. And F and G. All right? So that's all you need to know. Like I say, sometimes you do need to be able to read from the graph what the coordinates are you must know where the x is or where the y is. All right? This one. Here, it's a... Okay, if you are, if you are given this graph, you are asked, what is the degree of this graph? Four. Four. Four, because it should have, it should have, uh, it has four roots. roots. All right? Now, unless you are given something like this, you know that these are the turning point. If you're given something like this, okay? Okay, in this case, you can't tell how many degrees there are because you really don't know what's happening around here. All right? You cannot tell. This one you can because you know that they are turning points. Okay? So that one, not possible. So here, X and Y intercept. X intercept. Let's say here, one, two, three, four. So A, B, C, D. Y intercept, E. Now, the nature, positive, negative. So, the nature is as x approach negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. So, the y is always in the same uh, here, towards the negative infinity or towards negative infinity. Whereas, odd, it will be one towards negative infinity, one towards positive infinity. All right? So increasing between this point and here, the local maxima that's increasing, between E and the other local maxima is increasing, and then the rest between this and there, that is decreasing, here and here that's <coughs> decreasing. All right? So now the global local minima and maxima. Local minima, you know that there's point E, and maxima is F and G. 
and G. All right. Now, for the global extrema, is there a global maximum in this case? Yes. Good. Why? <laughs> Thank you. So here you can ex you can actually identify the global maximum, which is point F and G. But there's no global minimum there. You can go on and go on. Point of inflection, whether it's oblique or horizontal. So a point of inflection, there should be one here and there should be one here. Since it is symmetrical, let's call it this is H and this is I. It should be and they are oblique, H and I. All right. Concavity between A and H. That is concave down between C, uh, I and D is concave down between H and I is concave up. All right. Now here is an even. You may have an axis of symmetry. All right. The axis of symmetry would be this point. So you may not necessarily have axis of symmetry for even. All right. Even the only thing is you may have axis of symmetry. Quadratic, definitely has axis of symmetry. But anything with a power of 4 and above, you may not necessarily have axis of symmetry. In this case, the axis of symmetry is x equals to 0. Here is another something to the power of 4. All right? It's an even. You can work out the x and y in the set, the nature, the local extrema, and this time, we actually do have a global minima. The global minimum would be this point here. All right? So I'm sure you can now recognize what is a point of inflection. All right? So I'm not going to go through and write everything out for this one. Axis of symmetry, is there one? So there's none. Uh, this one. You've got everything in there. The local maxima, the local minima, and the point of inflection, the roots, the y-intercept, and... Whew, this one actually has a... I forgot the question about the global minima. There is a global minimum, which is this point over here. All right? So, local maxima... There's only one point, which is A, here. All right? Minimum is, minima is B and C. All right? The point of inflection. Point of inflection, D, E, and E is horizontal. Horizontal is E. F, and G. All right? The roots... H, also the roots is here, I, E and I is the same point, K. Wind the set, wind the set, again is the same as E and I, so, oh, H, I, J, K, oh, that's not, should be L, L, and then between which point is the graph concave up? Concave up is between H and D, and also between G and K. Concave down between, oh, also here, between E and F. Concave down between D and E. And also between uh, F and G. All right. One last one, the important one. Can you think about sketching this? I'm going to get you to sketch this. I'm not going to give you a hand yet. Is this even or odd? Please don't use your class pad yet. Even. even. So if it is even, what happened? It should have two tails going up or two tails going down, right? Here, because it's positive, it's two tails going up. So now you can describe the behavior as X, approach positive infinity, Y approach positive infinity. X approach negative infinity, Y approaches uh, positive infinity. Both of them are pointing up. So it looks something like this. 
whatever it is in the middle. All right. So in the middle, we don't know yet. Here, shh. you need to find the intercept. All right. Let's try to find the root. So let's try x equals to one. So if g x g one is actually one to the power of four plus two to the power of one minus one minus two, which means one plus two minus one minus two equals to zero. So therefore, we know x. Uh, x minus 1 is a factor so then we use synthetic division so here synthetic division I've got 1 2 O minus 1 uh, minus 2 0 for 0 x square so divided by 1 so therefore you got 1 Bring it up to 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. 1, 3 is 3. Uh, 3, that's 2. And 2 and 0. Therefore, we know gx is actually equals to x minus 1, x cubed, plus 3x squared, plus 2x, plus 0. Alright? And then, we know that... Um, x I've already worked it out so x uh, plus 2 is a factor so I divide this bit by uh, minus 2 so which is synthetic division so minus 2 this is 1x cubed 3x squared 3 and 2 so bring 1 down this is minus 2 3 plus minus 2 is 1. So, minus 2 minus um, 2, 3 plus minus 2 is 1. So, minus 2. Therefore, gx is equal to x minus 1. x plus 2. Now, x squared plus 1. x plus 1. So, you know that you cannot factorize this any further. So you know the two roots. One of them would be x is minus 2, the other is 1. And you know that the graph goes that way. Alright? So the graph goes that way, but the problem is we don't know what is happening here. So now what I would like you to do is go and check with your class pad. Plot this one out and make sure that you know what it looks like. It should look like something like this. Alright? Then you can f use your class pad to find the local maximum and the local minima. Alright? So be careful with anything. If we don't know the local maximum and local minima, we can't actually plot uh, this bit of the graph. We can plot the roots and we know the direction. That's all. And of course, you should be able to find the point of inflection using the uh, class pad.